lakes go through a process. In short, over time they silt up, grow in, and turn back into land. Human activities on and around a lake can speed up that process. Oftentimes, it's necessary to intervene to maintain the lake's healthy aquatic environment for wildlife and recreation. This is the Gila National Forest and the, the forest has different districts. This is the Wilderness District. Um, this is uh, Lake Roberts, which is a um, forest service lake, but also uh, jointly with the Game and Fish Department, New Mexico Game and Fish. They fish in here for everything from bass to trout to um, catfish. Um, it is stocked periodically by a game and fish department um, as um, just an angling recreation lake. Yeah, guys, if we could make sure and cut them underwater so that the lures and stuff don't get hooked on them. So I know you're trying not to fall in, but yeah. just try to try to reach what you can. And then the other ones will come back and, and try to get them in waders or something. What these guys are doing, um, they've been working for me trying to get these um, cattails cleaned out. We're having a, some events coming up at the lake and we'd really like to increase the access um, for the anglers. Um, cattails are great for um, some birds and some different species, but when they completely cover every inch of shoreline around the lake, it makes it really hard on people to enjoy their experience out here. Um, you can't get to the water to throw a line in to fish and um, uh, it's just, you know, it makes it really hard. So what we've done is, is trying to keep the habitat in, intact for different species. We've left big swaths of cattails, but we've also removed different little sections so that people can get to the water and, and enjoy themselves. Some of the things that we do are like silt removal. When the lake gets uh, silted in, it becomes more shallow, which is um, bad for fish. It's bad for just even the, the lake itself, just oxygen levels are kind of ruined and that kind of thing. So we try to remove some of the silt when we can. Um, and we also try to um, remove some of the non-native species that, that come in around the lake that kind of take over. Um, purple loosestrife is one of them that we had a problem with in the past coming in here, um, a non-native invasive species, but we've been able to get it um, under control and it's pretty much gone now from the lake. It's a hands-on experience for college students on summer work programs. They assist in the lake restoration and learn about habitat management. It started first with taking out goldfish a few years back, maybe about four or five years ago. And then they installed those solar bees that you see out there in the lake uh, to help oxygenate the water and, and get rid of some of the blue-green algae and just pump more oxygen into the lake. And then this last year and, and this year, we're removing some of the cattails. That way people have more access to the lake. The non-native invasive species, especially aquatic, um, we, a lot of times we call them aquatic hitchhikers because they come by way of um, boat trailers from other areas in the country where maybe they are even natural and native, but then they come into our waters where they're not. And uh, what they do is sometimes outcompete native species and take over and cause a lot of problems. Some of the, the problems with high usage comes um, some uh, abuse, you know, in the form of trash and um, also in the form of just um, the human impact on, on things by way of either trampling vegetation or um, you know leaving stuff laying around or leaving their mark on the land that kind of thing I'd say that's probably the biggest impact that people have is just not leaving it wild for other folks you know to enjoy as well um, and uh, you know, I, we encourage people to really take out everything that they bring in and not cut into the side of trees or uh, remove things and things like that, just to keep it where everybody can enjoy it. Whereas habitat management and restoration is not an exact science, without it, lakes like this would quickly become less beneficial for both wildlife and people who rely on it for survival and recreation. We're trying some things each year a little differently to see if things move faster and, and um, in some cases they'll, they work really well and you can tell right away by either the fish moving into an area that they hadn't you know, uh, been into for a while because the water had been too warm um, or something like that or um, you can just, uh, we do lots of testing on the water and we'll see that we have indeed dropped the, the temperature of the water which in a lot of cases is what um, our impairment issue is, is temperature. Um, and then in other cases, you'll do all this work and then the next year you'll have a flood and kind of wipes out all the work you did and you kind of start over. So, but I mean, that's mother nature and that's how it works. So um, we just keep kind of picking away at all the different areas we're working on and trying to just help out a little bit. 
Tens of thousands of man hours and millions of dollars are spent each year. So everyone from the sportsman to the conservationist to the pure recreationist have the opportunity to enjoy what New Mexico has to offer.